there, yeah. Right, there. On this episode, I sneak out of jury duty to bring you the show. Chuck, and this is episode 114 of the Ask Gary Vee Show. Uh, today was a show that was not supposed to happen, as you guys know. Yesterday I mentioned that today would not happen, but it's a little bit of a curveball. This is a very special jury duty edition of the Ask Gary Vee Show. I saw an opening, a big opening they gave for us for lunch. I emailed the gang, and here we are. And I guess that's it. First, big love to the Vayner Nation. So many lurkers came out. So many of you talking about the awesome energy of episode 113. I agree. Instant classic India in my opinion. And uh, I guess we should uh, get into it. So, uh, India, (laughs) let's get into the the show. (laughs) Gerald asks, if your kids want to join the family biz, will you start them at the bottom? Gerald, if the kids uh, want to go into the family business, which is really interesting to me, I'm super curious what's ha- what ends up happening with Misha and Xander. And honestly, at that point, as I project 15 to 20 years out, I feel the empire is going to be at such a level that it's going to be intense. I mean, crap, the family may- business in 20 years may actually be the Jets. Uh, yes, 100%, I will actually 1,000% make them stop, start from the bottom. I'm gonna throw a curveball, and I know little Xander, little Misha, you're watching this right now, probably in five to seven years from now, where you can comprehend this, but I need you to see this, and I need you to know your dad is not bullshitting you. Not only will I make them start from the bottom, or let me rephrase, I'll make them start from the appropriate place that their education or skill set as a young entrepreneur or executive created, just like I would treat you or DRock or anybody else, but here's the way more interesting part. I won't let them ascend to being number one, at least while I'm alive, unless they ascend to be number one. I think the thing that I'm most proud of, both in Wine Library and with uh, VaynerMedia, is we have friends and family involved in both businesses, and the levels that people play in are actually all over the place. This is something you guys know. You know so many of AJ's dear friends are involved in the company, and you know that there's just different levels. We're not gonna get into names, but like people are playing at different levels. And obviously kids are different, and I could be conceivably completely full of shit because I'm not completely quantifying the enormous amount of love that I'm going to gather in them over the next years. But I have a funny feeling that my respect for meritocracy and capitalism is gonna force me into that game. And number two, I'm thrilled to write them a nice check more than 99% of people deserve for them to go do their own thing if they don't like it. If you don't like it, Xander, go do your thing. Misha. Oh, you're mixing it up, huh? I like how D-Rock's mixing it up. I, you better have kept the gray as we kind of moved. All right. Did we get my, did we get my green on green on green? Did we get my like, Give me the color now. I went super like peppermint patty up on 114. So you like this, right, India? That's my favorite color. Nice, awesome. All right, Dira, let's All go. Right. Jensen asks, do you work on your birthday? <laughs> Couple things, my man. Number one, I hate my birthday. My 40th birthday is coming November 14th of this year. That was a little bit of a specific drop, mainly because I want the entire Vayner Nation to buy me a lot of gifts. Jets jerseys of random rare players are at the top of the things that I like, medium. Uh, I've worked on every birthday of my entire life, all of them. Literally, even some in my teenage years because they happened to fall on weekends when my dad was dragging my ass to the store. But since I became a full-time professional at 22, I've worked every birthday. It's, I, I've given a talk, I gave a speech. Like the, uh, the Remax convention for Thank you economy came out during my birthday, like gave a speech on my birthday. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like that doesn't, that, that was a silly question. Uh, 100% all in. You want to do what you love on your birthday. I'm lucky enough to be doing what I love. Ben asks, how do you handle people missing deadlines they set? Uh, ben, this is an interesting kind of question. Poorly. Because usually I 
Usually I, uh, you know, look, let me break this down actually. The way I struggle, the way I react to people who set their own deadlines and miss them are predicated into the A and B bucket that I put them in. Meaning, either I put you into a bucket where you're a hardcore executor, you're extremely reliable, you're on your shit, you're, you know, T's and I's and everything, and that's what I value in you because that's what you're great at. If you miss a deadline, I am pissed because that's what you do. Now, if you're in the magic category, gray, stumbling all over yourself, calling out sick randomly, weird, but you got magic and you make stuff happen, well, that's, I kind of think you're gonna miss your deadline. I actually don't even believe you in the first place when you set a deadline, and so that I'm okay with another two or three days. So I think it predicates completely on where I have you bucketed, and then are you actually executing on that bucket? Uh, so that's how I react to that question. Um, from Cameron? Let's move it around. Oh, look at me now. <laughs> I like the, I like the city bike stuff. All right. Uh, you get on the bike? I don't want to get on the bike. <laughs> Cameron asks, what are your thoughts on 3D printing technology and the potential to integrate with social media? I'm a big fan of 3D printing. You know, I think if you play it out at scale, 3D printing is one of the most disruptive things going on that I think a lot of people talked about and it's not the hot topic right now which makes me feel like in 2019, 2022, it's gonna pop and everyone's gonna be like, what? It's kind of like the internet itself, right? After the dot-com bubble burst in 01 on Wall Street, people kind of didn't realize the internet was only growing and would really be a factor. Same thing with 3D printing. It got a lot of pizzazz. Now it's a kind of soft period. Everyone's talking about the Ubers and the Airbnbs. I think it's gonna re really rear its head in five to seven years. Um, you know, how it integrates into social is not interesting. I, I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I don't think that's interesting. I think what's interesting is if you sell a physical good between five and a hundred dollars, I think you have real disruption coming up in five, 10, 15, 20 years. Like, like nobody's buying a screwdriver in 15 years. You're making one. And that's intense. Uh, and then 3D printing gets into a real intense place, including like people arguing about gun control in a world where people are gonna be printing guns in their home. Like, who gives a shit about gun shows and permits? I'm printing it in my basement. So, society will evolve. We will always adjust. You go show somebody who lived 150 years ago all the intensity we deal with, they would have thought that we would have killed ourselves off by now. Humans have a funny way to adjust. I'm, I'm in on Team Human, but don't get it twisted. 3D printing is a massive disruptor and over the next two decades will rear its head for all of us. Last one from Clinton. I'm back, I'm, it's sort of warm, I kind of like the shade. Clinton asks, are you ever scared before you do something big? Anything at all? It doesn't even have to be business related. Clinton, the only thing that I'm scared of, really, in a public setting, or that might sound big, this is what the Ask Gary Vee show is for, right? We've got to show the 360. It's probably going to be one of the more vulnerable things that I've said on the show. And it's, I'm setting it up, but you're all going to be like, what? I am actually scared of reading in public because I'm, I'm come to learn in the last three or four years, I'm an atrocious reader. I really struggle with it. As a matter of fact, one of the big shifts in 2015 that I've made is I'm making a lot more five and seven minute meetings with my staff because I don't read fast enough for the value of my time. I, you know, even when I read to Misha, believe it or not, I'm like a quarter of an inch hesitant. Like if I had to create the greatest story off the top of my head right now for Misha, I feel cozy and calm. Like reading like Goodnight Moon, I'm like, mm. like, like I'm just a terrible reader. Like in Passover, like reading the things on the table, like I don't like to read. It's funny, when I started getting asked to do TV shows, one of the reasons I didn't want to do a TV show was I didn't want to read off the Chiron. And then, and even when I did my wine and web uh, radio show on Sirius for nine months, my first commercial read was a disaster. Probably the worst thing I ever did publicly. Guy came in, Sam Ben Ruby, big ups, yeah, father of many of the employees at VaynerMedia, came in and was like, do what Howard Stern does, he can't read either. Just read it and then do your thing. The second read was insanity because I read it, I knew what the Stella Artois, ironically a VaynerMedia client now, what that ad wanted to get off and I did an incredible read. Uh, so I'm very improv, I know what I'm good at, uh, I'm stunningly not scared of most things. I'm scared of snakes, uh, somewhat of heights. Uh, I really am ultimately scared of dying. Uh, and weirdly enough, the first thing that came to mind was I really don't want to read in public. 
uh, badly. Like that is probably like at the top of the list, believe it or not. And that's kind of intriguing to me. It's a funny kind of thing. So that's it. That's it, huh? That was a nice, concise show. If you think about kind of the feedback yesterday, everyone's was like, that's a long one. Uh, fun show, I'm really glad I'm continuing it. Super excited, I saw a bunch of you saw what I put out on Instagram. I'll go to the official term tomorrow, but I'm gonna do a Kickstarter-like thing, probably tomorrow or next day. Uh, and so be ready for it where I'm adding at least 100 to 200 questions to the Ask Gary V book that's coming out early next year that have never been answered uh, before. And I'm gonna do some sort of thing where people that are watching the show, if they pre-order, I don't know if I'm gonna do 50 or 100 books, they get an automatic entry and will be in the book and then get a special call with you, India, to make sure the, uh, to, to make sure that the question is on point. So, appreciate all the support. Big ups to everybody on Facebook who is tagging people in the comments. That means the world to me because you're trying to pass on the show. Glad I ran out of the courtroom to bring you episode 114 of the Ask Gary Vee Show. And I felt tight with the questions today. Question of the day. Have you ever done jury duty? And if you have, tell me your story. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. Podcast peeps, I know you weren't expecting a show today, 114, it's about to come at you, it's hot. Uh, Yeah, it's hot. India, give me the podcast exclusive. (laughs) Keep that laugh, D-Rock, let's go.